All right, everyone, have a seat up on your left. Cross your legs in the center of your shins. Take your feet beneath your knees. Close your eyes, rest your hands. Start with simply being here. No goal to get anywhere, no goal to fix anything. Just being here. Notice any thoughts that are floating around or swirling around. No need to resist them, though you can move them to the back bottom part of your brain. Allow them to be there. And give yourself permission to drop your awareness into the body. Find that even balance of your sits bones. Lengthen through the inner groins from the inner thighs through the inner knees from the upper inner thighs back towards the lower abdomen. That whole length of the groin lengthening. Descend the flesh of the inner thighs. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Maintaining that activity of the legs, those actions of the legs, lengthen through the side ribs. Keep the front bottom ribs moving towards the back body, lengthen through the side ribs. Allow the shoulders to move down and away from the sides of your neck as you lengthen from the armpits to the inner elbows. And see that you're finding an evenness on the two sides of the torso, an evenness on the two arms, the shoulders, the inner arms. And as the elbows descend towards the floor with gravity, bring your palms together, thumbs at your chest. Release, relax all of your facial features, let your face become completely still as your eyes rest into your cheekbones, gazing at your heart, the seat of your heart, the seat of your soul. And let's chant the syllable OM three times together, exhaling completely, deep inhalation. Om. Lifting your sternum towards the ceiling, lower your chin towards your heart. Release your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. With your eyes closed, raise your head. Gently let your eyes open. Straighten your legs. You can stay up on a lift if you want to be on the floor, that's fine. Careful for your knees, press your thigh bones down. So separate the understanding of your thigh bone and your knee and press the thigh bone down. Still lengthening the inner groins, extending all the way out through the inner heels, little toes move back towards you and draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. So the kneecaps are firm because this outer quadricep muscle is working. The top as well, 
we focus more on the on the outer quadricep, but the, the top of the leg does, does draw back as well. So from right above the kneecap, drawing back into the body. And as long as we're doing other parts of the thigh, the hamstring draws back as well. So the top of the calf, right next to the knee, moves out towards the heel. The bottom of the hamstring and the whole hamstring moves towards the buttocks. And that way the leg becomes straighter without just pushing the knee down. Instead, we open the back of the knee. So the outer knee to the outer hip, the top thigh drawing back, the hamstring drawing back, and the top of the inner thighs also drawing back. Even as you extend out through the inner heel and the calf extending towards the back of the heel. Lift up through the side ribs. Separate your legs. And then we repeat all that with wide legs now. So we can have an opening of the hips. It's a, a, there's more opening in the hamstrings, excuse me, in the, in the groins as well. So the first thing you wanna do when the feet are together, it's easier for the, the toes and the kneecaps to point upward because the feet are a guide. When they're apart, the legs tend to turn out. So turn the legs and kneecaps up, toes up. Lengthen the inner groins, right? So there's an extension from the, the inner knee out to the inner heel through the ball of the big toe, but from the upper inner thighs, there's a drawing back. The thigh bone does press down. Outer knee to outer hip. Compact the hips together. You all know that one. But then it's also the top of the thigh draws back in. The hamstring draws back towards the buttocks, even as the calf moves towards the heel. So hamstring to the buttocks, calf towards the heel. And notice, for me anyway, the experience of the legs are completely different. Hence by your, your hips so you're supporting your torso. For me, the legs are completely different. What is it for you? And how can you work them differently to create an experience of similarity on the two sides? A sense of alignment on the two sides. Of course, lift through the side ribs, front bottom ribs back. Drop the shoulders down. Hold on the inside of the knees. Pull straight up with your arms. Let your feet come together. If you're on the floor, you can take your hands underneath the feet. Otherwise, fingertips by your hips still. Press your heels, soften the shoulders. And again, if, you're, if your hands are underneath your feet, your feet press into the hands, pushing the hands down versus your hands pulling your feet up. So press the heels, lengthen from the inner thighs through the inner knees, the knees push away. The upper inner thighs draw back towards the abdomen, draw the outer knees to the outer hips. You can draw the top of the thigh back as well. Obviously the legs bend, so there's not that hamstring calf work that we were talking about. But can you maintain those actions in the legs? Lift through the side ribs as well. Take your hands on the outside of your knees, push your legs together, hold behind one knee, draw the flesh towards the buttock, straighten the leg, other leg, draw the flesh towards the buttock, straighten the leg, hands by your hips, dandasana.
And after opening up the groins and the hips, then Upavista Konasana and Baddha Konasana. Upavista is wide legs, Baddha Konasana is, is legs together, the bound legs. It, you may have a different experience in the groins here, which will create a different experience in the lift of your side ribs as well, soften your shoulders. And then release. Come on to your hands and knees. If you're using a chair or blocks for downward facing dog, take them. Roll your forearms in, press down through the ball of the first finger and thumb. At the same time, roll your upper arms out. So find that balance between the forearms rolling in and the upper arms rolling out. And then push into the floor. Lift your chest up off of your wrists. Turn your toes under, straighten your legs. And inhale, and your exhalation, come into the pose. Thighs back, chest towards your thighs, sit bones towards the ceiling. Don't sink the ribs down. Take your front bottom ribs towards the back body. Uh, feet a little further apart, George. Take the front bottom ribs towards the back body, then Press the thighs back, lengthen from the tip of your first finger all the way through to your sit bones. Move your shoulders away from your ears. So yes, turn the upper arms out. You still have to turn the forearms in, but turn the upper arms out so the shoulders move away from your ears. Move the shoulders towards your waist. Move the shoulder blades towards your waist and press the thighs back. And here too, if that feels okay in your ankles, that, that's, that's fine, but if not, you have the, the slanted plank. Which ankle hurts more? Okay, I would have guessed the other, but okay. I know we say press into the outer heel. I want you to balance evenly on the inner and outer heel. Look up, walk your feet forward, come into a forward bend. Uttanasana. Hips over your heels. You can separate your feet. If your legs aren't straight, just take your feet wider apart. Press the thigh bones back. So again, the lengthening of the inner knees, from the inner knees through the groins, all the way up into the body. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips. Lift the front of the leg from above the knee, lift up into the body. So the front quadriceps, so outer quadriceps, front quadriceps, the inner thighs lifting. Now the back of the leg, open the eye of the knee. So the top of the calf moves down, but the bottom of the hamstring lifts up and the whole hamstring moves towards the buttocks. Let your arms go, hands on the floor. Walk your feet back. Downward facing dog. So press the thigh bones back and get the actions of the legs. So yes, lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Lengthen from the inner knees, deep up into the body, lengthen the groins. The, from above the front of the knee, lift up into the body, the front quadricep. In the back of the leg, opening the eyes of the knees, the top of the calf goes down, but the bottom of the hamstring goes up and the hamstring moves into the buttocks. To be clear, the buttocks moves down into the hamstring. So it's not that you're, you're lifting the sit bones rise up, but the buttocks, the bottom part of the buttocks and the hamstring seek to meet each other. The buttocks down, hamstring up. And then notice as soon as you go to one part of the leg, you miss the other part. So keep going around, outer legs, inner legs, front legs, back legs. See if you lost something, do the cycle again. And then look up, walk your feet forward. Uttanasana, forward bend, 
Hold your elbows the opposite way. Outer knees to outer hips. Inner knees through the tops of the thighs into the body. Front leg above the front of the knees, front quadricep lifting up. Back leg, the top of the calf goes down, the bottom of the hamstring moves up into the buttocks. The bottom of the buttocks does move towards the hamstring. The sits bones move up. Right, so we used to either, we're, all, we're taking the whole buttock down or the whole buttock up, no. So the sits bones will come up. The top of the buttock moves away from your waist. The bottom of the buttock moves towards the hamstring, but the hamstring moves up into the buttocks. So there's a lot going on. And you need to begin to play with it and train and it might not all come at once. So then you need to look at it again and say, where can I deepen? Where can I refine? Which to be clear is different than where can I hurt more? Where can I feel more sensation? Where can I deepen? Where can I open? Where can I refine? That does not mean where can I have more pain in my body? Sometimes we, we let that pain guide us. Let your arms go, take your hands on your hips, elbows towards the ceiling, chest forward. So that brings the shoulder blades into the body. Keep the thighs pressing back. Keep all those actions of the legs, outer knees to outer hips, inner legs, lifting, front legs, lifting, hamstring moving into the buttocks. And as you maintain that, as you press the thighs back, inhale up into Tadasana. Then turn to face the front. If we can be together, if we can be uh, hip distance apart, if you prefer that. And let's get all those actions again. We're balance evenly on the feet. So, so if the feet are together, uh, George, take them together. That's it. I'm going to loosen this mask up a little bit. Yeah, well, again, and if you don't have your balance, take your feet and hip distance apart. It's fine. And if you're practicing, then... and in. And look, you, you can, if you know what you're doing, if you want to play with it a little closer together, that's okay. And go, okay, I'm keeping my feet an inch apart. That is okay. I'm keeping my feet a half inch apart. That's okay too, as long as you're not in your head going, well, my feet are together and part of it is together, part of it's not. So it's about choosing. I mean, there are some teachers that don't teach feet together because of the balance side of it and that that's fine. And there's also, you know, when your feet are apart, they are more vertical, right? So the weight is distributed, but then there's also something to the feet together. They're just different poses, even though we call them the same. So I won't say there's a right and wrong. I teach them both. I like them both. I practice them both. Press the thighs back. Balance evenly on the feet. So again, the legs. So the thighs go back, lift the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Lengthen from the inner knees all the way through to the lower abdomen. And, and if you get that, you can even feel it up into the rest of the torso. The front of the leg, from above the front of the knee, lift upward. And that can actually help you press that thigh back. And then the back of the leg, opening the eye of the knee. So the, the calf moves down, but the bottom of the hamstring moves up and the hamstring moves into the buttock. Again, the buttock moves into the hamstring. And then when you pay attention to one side, you may lose the other. So you pay attention to the back and you forget the front. You forget the sides, you forget the middle. So keep going around and see, see what sticks and see if you can get a glimpse. Remember we spoke, a few weeks ago about the glimpses of yoga. Can you perhaps just for a glimpse have all those experiences at once, the front, sides, outer legs, inner legs, back. The brain has to work slightly differently to do it. You have to spread the awareness. Instead of aiming your awareness at one particular spot, you have to spread the awareness. 
which causes a, a, a different condition in the brain. Lift up through the side ribs, extend through your arms, front bottom ribs towards the back body. Is that rain that I hear? That's something else. Oh yeah, it is. Here we go, wow. Well, I don't know what it sounds like where you're at home. Might be different in Paris, but here it's raining. <laughs> Feels like it's gonna come through the roof. Now, can you keep the awareness on the legs? Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. So now you're gonna to have to spread your awareness because we're about to add the arms. Can you keep some awareness in your legs as you take the arms out to the sides? Can you keep your awareness in your legs as you rotate the arms up? Can you keep the awareness in your legs as you take your front bottom ribs back? And I lost some of it, even as I'm here. So now I have to go back. Oh, front! I lost the front leg. So I'm gonna get the front leg back. I kept the outer outer legs. What else do I need? Okay, redo the back. All right, now can you keep the awareness on your legs as you extend the arms up? Observe your pose. More focus on your legs and the arms. Because what you're doing in your legs is going to adjust the arms. Turn your hands out to the sides. Come back. Keep the awareness on the legs. And then you can notice, that's when, this is when you really notice, did I keep my awareness on the legs? Because when you come back, you go, is my awareness still there? Or do I have to bring it back to my legs? And, 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 and if it went away and you brought it back to your legs, that's totally fine. This is a study, it's just a check-in. But we can, we can begin to study how our mind works. Interlace your fingers together, turn your palms out. So lift the inner legs, outer legs, front legs, back legs. Ribs in. Keep the awareness on the legs as you inhale, take the arms up. Keep the awareness on the legs. The arms are moving, I know. Keep the awareness on the legs. Legs, legs. Shoulders down as the wrists go up and keep the awareness on the legs. Release the arms out to the sides. Keep the awareness on the legs. Legs, legs, legs. Keep the awareness on the legs and place your fingers the opposite way. Keep the awareness on the legs, turn the palms out. Keep the awareness on your legs. Inhale, come up, legs. Keep the awareness on the legs. Keep the awareness on the legs. So what is the experience like when you are paying more attention to the legs even though you're moving your arms? Outer quadriceps lifting, front quadriceps lifting, inner groins lifting, lengthening, hamstring lifting even though the buttocks is down. Lift your arms up to the sides, come down. Cross your right elbow over your left elbow, cross the forearms, touch your palms. How many of you are paying attention to your legs? It's okay. Get it back, outer knees, outer hips, inner groins, lengthening, front front legs. Oh, that's getting closer. A little bit, yeah, every, every little bit, right. Hamstrings lifting as well. Rotate the wrist so the knife edge faces forward, but still keep your awareness on your legs. Keep your awareness on your legs as you take your upper arms parallel to the floor, forearms perpendicular to the floor. And release. Left elbow on top of right. Take those front ribs back and then get the awareness back on the legs, outer legs, inner legs, front legs, back legs. You all know the instructions, we've been doing it. Up arms parallel to the floor, keep the awareness on the legs. Forms perpendicular to the floor, keep the awareness on the legs. Rotating the wrists. 
Keep the awareness on the legs. And release. Turn to face the side of the mat. Get a chair if you use a chair for downward facing dog. Feet hip distance apart. Arms forward and up. Keep your awareness on your legs. So lift up through the all, all sides of the legs, lifting up. Turn your palms forward, inhale, exhale. Hands on the floor or your chair. Walk your feet back. And immediately get the awareness back on the legs. Immediately get the awareness back on the legs. Outer legs lifting, front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, back legs, the lower leg, the, the, the calf goes down, but the hamstring comes up lifting. Buttocks moves into the hamstring, yes. Keep the awareness on your legs as you lengthen through your inner arms, armpits, and side ribs. Keep your awareness on the, on the legs, those upper legs, as you extend the heels down. Keep the awareness on your legs as you take your chest towards your thighs. And begin to notice how the awareness of the legs changes all those. If, if you don't believe me, do drop the awareness on your legs and take your chest towards your thighs. And then bring the awareness back to your legs and take your chest towards your thighs. It's totally two different things. Please let your head go. Then look up, walk your feet forward, hands on your hips, chest forward, get the legs, outer legs, inner legs, front legs, hamstrings, back legs, lifting, everything lifting. Then inhale, come up. And then feet together or hip distance apart, Tadasana. You can turn to face the front. Repeat your trikonasana, triangle pose, fingertips up by your chest, bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. Drop the shoulders, extend through the arms. Legs, outer knees to outer hips. Front legs lifting as well, inner legs lifting. Back legs, it's a little different experience here, but, but the hamstring is still uh, lifting. You're opening the eyes of the knees. It feels different because the legs are at an angle, but you're still opening the eyes and the knees and the back of the hamstring is still coming into the buttocks, buttocks into the hamstring. Left foot in, right leg out. Keep the awareness on the legs. So everyone take your hands on, on, on your hips for a moment so you can really experience the legs. So the back thigh still moves back, right? We've been doing that. The front thigh turns out, that's a little different. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Front of the legs, lift up. Inner legs, lifting from the inner knees to the lower abdomen. Back of the legs. The calf moves down, but the hamstring is coming up. Hamstrings moving to the buttock, buttock to the hamstring on both legs, even though they're doing different things. Now, yes, we're going to, to move the arms in a, in a moment, but can you keep more awareness on the legs than your arms and torso, even though the legs are gonna be stationary and the torso and arms will move. Keep the awareness on the legs, extend your arms. Keep the awareness on the legs, exhale, come down. Keep the awareness on the legs, 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 legs. That's it, legs. Outer knees to outer hips. Front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, hamstrings lifting. Now keep your awareness on your legs as you extend through the arm to pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Take your hands on your hips. Outer knees to outer hips. And you can take the, the slanting plank to the other side if you want, it's okay, okay. Outer knees to outer hips. Front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, back legs lifting. Uh, right foot and left leg out. 
back thigh back. Outer, for, turn the front thigh out. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Front legs lifting. Inner legs lifting. And it's a little different because they're not symmetrical. So that, that causes the brain to work differently too. Back legs lifting. And you know, when you draw the, the back hamstrings up, you know, one of the instructions we give is to bring the tailbone forward, right? When you lift the hamstrings up into the buttocks and bring the buttocks down, you may experience, I experience the tailbone drawing forward. Extend the arms, but keep the awareness on the legs. Keep the awareness on the legs as you come down. That's it. Yeah, come down. Keep your awareness on your legs. Outer legs lifting, inner legs lifting, front legs lifting, hamstrings lifting, the buttocks meets the hamstrings. The teacher Trikonasana. That's good, George. Keep the awareness on your legs as you pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Some of you will notice that you come in and out of the pose more slowly when you are keeping all that awareness on your legs because you can't move quickly when you do that. And to be clear, I haven't said this in a while and it is quite important, getting in and how you get in into a pose and how you get out of a pose is more important than the pose itself. One of my teachers says, getting in the pose and getting out of the pose is a part of the pose, right? And that's true too. But getting into the pose and out of the pose are more important than the pose itself. Because that's where our mind, our minds are often in the pose when we are in the middle of it, but we tend to wander getting in and out. Fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step. And can you immediately bring that awareness to your legs? Immediately. Outer knees to outer hips, front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, back legs lifting, and evenness on both sides. That's the hardest part for me, is then adjusting to find a sense of, of evenness. Left foot and right leg out. And that's after 20 plus years of doing this. Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs, lifting. Keep your awareness on the legs. Keep your awareness on the legs, extend the arms away from each other. Keep your awareness on the legs, inhale, exhale, come down. Legs, 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 legs. The torso is just moving, the arms are moving. The awareness is on the legs, on the legs. Front leg, outer legs, inner legs, back legs. And then notice then which one leaves first. Which one doesn't want to hold the awareness? and send awareness there and cycle around and continue and adjust and adjust and adjust. How's the ankle, Leanne? Okay. Are you pressing through the ball of your front big toe? Yeah, yeah. Because it looks like you're falling into the outer ankle. Okay, it looks like it on the front foot too. And I don't want something to happen there, but you be the judge. Yeah. Keep your hands on the legs, inhale, come up and out, parallel the feet and immediately back to the legs, outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. Right foot in, left leg out. Outer legs lifting, front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, back legs lifting. Keep the awareness on the legs. Inhale, keep the awareness on the legs. Exhale, come down. Legs, legs, the arms do extend away from each other, but most of the awareness is on the legs. Outer legs. Inner legs, front legs, back legs. Take your whole torso back. 
not the arm, that was your arm. Take the shoulder, both shoulders back. Your hands are behind your shoulders, but I don't want you to take your hands forward. I want you to take your sh shoulders back to your hands. Like there's a wall behind you. Legs. And again, which leg, which leg, may, which part of the leg maintains the front leg, or, or which one? Does your back leg have more awareness than your front leg? Does the outer leg have more awareness than the inner leg? And can you spread your awareness to both legs? Awareness on your legs, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. All right, take, take your chair. We're gonna do some of what we did the other day. So chair on the side of your mat. We're gonna do uh, Parjotanasana. So hands down on the chair. And if you remember, we walked our legs back far enough. So it's not here where your shoulders are over your wrists, but you have to come back here, front heel in line with your arch and your arms and torso are at least getting closer to a straight line. I'm not in a straight line here, you know, one day, maybe. I don't have quite that flexibility, but they're closer to a, a straight line. So that, that angle in your armpits is, is, is an open one. So go back as far as you're able and it's comfortable. So as the other day, the first thing that happened is that right hip goes forward. Take the right hip back. Take that right hip back. Now still lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Lift the front thighs up, both legs. Inner knees through the inner groins. And the back legs as well. So the calves go down, but the hamstrings come up to meet the buttock. And because of, of, of how the legs are, are positioned differently, one angled in front, one or diagonal in front, diagonal in back, the experience is very different, but can you still bring that awareness there? So lifting outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. And then as you move your hips back, you crawl your hands forward to get more length through the side ribs and armpits. Still, but keeping the awareness on the legs. If you do that without the lift of the legs, it's very different. I'm not saying you can't do that. You can, and I don't always teach the legs so thoroughly, but it is a different experience. And then walk your hands back to where they were, bend your front leg and switch legs. So left, left foot forward, right leg back. So again, take the right hip, excuse me, left, left hip back, right? So the two sides of your torso are equal in length. That's the goal here. Then lift your outer knees to outer hips. Lift the front legs, front quadriceps, lifting up from the, above the knee into the body. It's different on the legs, I get that. Bring your wrist to both legs anyway. The inner legs, inner knees, up towards the abdomen, lengthen. The calves move down, but lift the hamstrings up to the buttocks. Buttocks does move towards the hamstrings. So outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. And then maintain that. Keep more awareness on the legs. We're about to move the arms. Keep more awareness on the legs. Keep the hips going back as you walk the hands forward. Left hip still going back as you walk the hands forward. And then take your hands back slightly to where they were, bend the front leg, walk the back leg forward, take your hands on your hips, extend your chest forward, inhale, come up into Tadasana. 
outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs, all working. And then of course, front ribs towards the back body, lifting through the side ribs, extend through your arms. And release, take a couple blocks in front of the chair, out to the sides. Keep the chair, still using the chair. We're gonna start off as we were and take it a step further. We didn't do this, this part on Tuesday. So now we're taking it a step further. Maybe, you don't have to. It's gonna depend on your body. So hands on the chair, we're gonna start the same way. So right leg forward, left leg back. Do press the ball of the front big toe, okay? There, you need that for stability. The front thigh does turn out, but don't, don't go so much that, that you can't press in the ball of the big toe. It's like downward facing dog, pressing into the inner hand. Rotating the upper, upper arm out, same thing. It helps protect both your knee and your ankle. But do take the right hip back. Do take the right hip back to even out the sides of your torso, right? Two sides of your torso equal in length. And then the legs, outer legs, lifting, outer knees to outer hips, compact the hips. Front legs, lifting. Especially the, the, the front of the front leg, lift. The back leg too, it's a little, that one's harder for me anyway to grasp, but I, but I still spread my awareness there. Inner legs, lifting, those groins, hamstrings, lifting. And now with that, lengthen, crawl the hands forward. And as you crawl the hands forward, keep the hips back, especially the right hip back. And as you crawl the hands forward, you feel that lengthen into the torso. Now keep that lengthening of the torso and take your hands back onto the blocks. And maybe you want high blocks, maybe you want medium blocks, maybe you want low blocks, maybe you don't actually need the blocks. Lift through the legs. The more you lift through the legs, the more your torso falls over your thighs, your chest moving towards the big toe. Outer knees to outer hips, front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, hamstrings lifting. So think lifting up, more than forcing your torso down, think lifting up through your legs. And the more you lift up through your legs, the more your torso goes down. Let your head go, please. In this position, the, the head drops. <clears throat> In the other one, the head does begin to look up. <clears throat> and again, it's not the goal isn't to get your head to your shin. The goal is to get your chest towards your big toe. Keep the awareness on the legs. You can bend the elbows out to the sides as well. And then straighten the arms, begin to look up now. Take your hands back onto the chair. Lengthen the arms forward again. And then take the hand slightly back, bend the front leg and switch legs. All right, is this making sense for everybody? Words making sense, everything clear? All right, so left foot is forward, right leg is back. You have your blocks if you need them. If you don't need them, that's fine. You don't have to have them. Take the left hip back. Take the left hip back so the two sides of your torso are equal in length. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Lift the front of the legs up. Lift the inner legs up. The lengthening of the groins. Lift the hamstrings up. Think lifting. It is a forward bend, but we have the lift in forward bend. The lift gives us the downward action of the torso. But we're not going down yet. We're still doing the lengthening part. So. Outer, front, inner, back legs all lifted. In the back leg, the buttocks does meet the hamstring. 
Keep your wrists on your legs as you walk your hands forward to get more length through the side of the torso. But keep the lifting awareness of the legs. Now maintaining that lifted awareness of the legs, maintaining the length of the torso, you can take your hands down onto the blocks, onto the floor. You can bend your elbows out to the sides. Keep lifting through the legs, outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. The more I lift, the more I go down. The goal is to get the chest towards the big toes, not the head to the shin. Chest towards big toes. Work the lifting of the legs to get there. Don't force your torso down to get there. Don't even, don't even force your hamstring to get there. Focus on the lifting, outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. Please let the head go. And keeping the awareness of the legs, keeping that lifting, take your hands back onto the chair, walk your hands forward, get that nice length again. And then walk hands back a little bit, bend the front leg, walk the back leg to the front leg, feet together or hip distance apart, hands on your hips, inhale, come up to dasana. Legs, outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs, lifting. And release, put the chair to the side. Take the blocks to the, the back of the mat. We'll send a few feet to Parjo Konasana. I don't know who needed all that leg work today, but somebody apparently did, because that's the message I got. Wasn't the plan I had coming in here. So I hope it's working out for everybody. Are you aware of your legs? Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs? You're gonna be in the supermarket today. Legs, legs. Fingertips up. Bend your legs, jump or step your feet apart. Thigh bones back. I should take your hands on your hips for a moment. Thigh bones back. Outer legs, lifting. I hope the lifting is implied now, right? Front legs, lifting. Inner legs, lifting. Back legs, so the, the calf goes down, but the hamstrings up to meet the buttocks. All right, maintain that. We're gonna move the arms, we're gonna move the torso, but can you maintain that experience on the legs? Extend the arms. Left foot and right leg out. Front heel in line with your arch, but get the legs lifting. Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. Now we bend the leg, bend the front leg. Outer legs, still drawing back. The front leg is a little different. It, it's still, the top of the thigh still draws back on that front leg, but you are extending that knee, the inner knee away from you. So it's slightly different. The back leg, inner knee lifting up. Back leg, well, both hamstrings drawing back to the buttocks. And yeah, both legs, the calves can go towards the heels. That one works. And then inhale, hand on the block. Exhale, hand on the block. Pick your left hand on your hip. And get the legs again, outer knees to outer hips on both legs. Lengthening the groin. So the back leg is inner knee lifting up. The front leg, the knee moves away, but the top of the thigh still moves towards the abdomen. So again, we're looking to use the brain differently. Front legs drawing back. Lifting. Hamstrings meeting the buttocks. You know, the calves seek the heel. And for me, the more I really get that on the legs, the more my torso begins to turn. So if your torso isn't turning, rotate the torso and then finish the pose. Arm up, rotate it, extend over your arm, but can you keep more awareness on the legs than that arm which is doing the extending? 
And notice how the awareness on the legs affects the extension of the side body. So instead of just forcing through the side body, how does all that awareness of the legs affect the extension of your side body? Head back, man. And then look towards your armpit. There you go. Without dropping your head. There you go. Keep the awareness on the legs as you pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet, take your hands on your hips for a moment. Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. Keep that, extend the arms. Right foot in, left leg out. Outer legs, inner legs, front legs, back legs. Maintain the awareness on the legs as you exhale. So here we are, Virabhadrasana 2. We're going into Parjwal Konasana, but get the legs first, right? So outer knees to outer hips. Front legs moving up towards the torso. Inner legs. So again, the bent leg, the knee does move away, but from the top of the thigh comes back. In the back leg, the, the, there's the lifting. Hamstrings moving towards the buttocks. Maintain that in the leg as you exhale, come down. Hand on the block or on the chairs, whatever you need. Back hand on, on, on your hip, top hand on your hip for a moment. Get the legs, outer knees to outer hips. Front legs, moving towards the torso, lifting. Lengthening the inner groins of both legs. So on that front leg, the knee does move away, but there's that drawing back towards the abdomen. And the hamstrings moving towards the buttocks, the calves move towards the heels. Allowing the torso to turn, head back. And then maintaining your awareness on your legs. 90% of your awareness on your legs as you extend your arm up. Rotate the arm, extend over your ear, but the awareness is on your legs as you do so. And again, you know, I recommend studying. I recommend not believing every word I say for, you know, for yourself. Doing it without so much awareness on the legs and doing it with awareness on the legs. And, 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 and say to yourself, what is, what is the difference here? Does it have truth for me? If it does, great. If it doesn't, great. Keep your awareness on your legs as you pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. So watch those blocks as you separate your, your feet again. Fingertips up, bend your legs, jump your step. Awareness on the legs. Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. Left foot in, right leg out. Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. All right, hopefully some of it is beginning to be ingrained into the body. We're bending the leg. Keep your awareness on your legs as you bend the legs. The back leg too. Don't lose the back leg just because we're bending the front leg. Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. Exhale, come down. Hands on your, hand on, top hand on your hip. Outer legs. Top legs, front legs. Inner legs, right? And again, that bent leg, the knee does move away but there's a drawing back towards the abdomen or the top of the groins of both legs. The back legs, hamstring towards the buttocks. Keep your awareness on your legs. Take the front bottom moves back. Keep your awareness on your legs, finish. Extend the arm, rotate the arm, extend it over your ear. Keep the awareness on your legs as you extend through the side body. Keep your awareness on your legs, outer leg, front leg, inner leg, back leg. Keep your awareness on your legs as you pull yourself up and out. Keep your awareness on your legs. Now we're, now we're, we're, we're in both sides are, are similar, right? So can you have an equal awareness? Outer legs, front legs, inner legs, back legs. And then other side, right foot and left leg out. Outer legs, 
front legs, inner legs, back legs. Maintain the awareness on the legs, bend the front leg, outer legs, inner legs, back legs, front legs. Keep your awareness on your legs as you come down. Top hand on your hip, outer legs. Outer knees to outer hips, front legs, from the top of the knee, above the knee, drawing back into the body, inner legs lengthening, hamstrings moving towards the buttocks, calf towards the heels, hamstring towards the buttocks. Maintain the awareness on the legs, take your front ribs back. Maintain your awareness on the legs, finish the pose, arm up, rotate it, extend over your ear. Keep your awareness on your legs, outer legs, front legs, inner legs. Back legs. Pull yourself up and out. Keep your awareness on your legs as you do so. Legs, legs, legs. Parallel your feet. Legs, legs, legs. We're back to symmetrical. And then jump or shift your feet together back to Tadasana. Legs. And release, move the blocks to the side. If you're using blocks for downward facing dog and the chair for downward facing dog, take them. Come toward, turn, turn sideways on your mat. Extend your arms forward, arms up. Hold your elbows. Legs, awareness on your legs. Outer legs lifting, front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, back legs lifting. Inhale, exhale, come down. Outer legs lifting, front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, back legs lifting, the buttocks meets the hamstring, of course. Come to downward facing dog, hands on the floor, walk your feet back. Get the legs first, yes, the thighs go back, outer legs lifting, front legs lifting, inner legs lifting, hamstrings lifting, the calves go down, the hamstrings go up, the hamstrings meet the buttocks, the buttocks meets the hamstring, awareness on the legs. All the legs, all the legs. Keep lifting through the legs, push through the hands and lengthen through the side ribs. Keep lifting through the legs, take your chest towards your thighs. And then keep the, the, the awareness of the legs, you'll bend your legs. Touch your knees to the floor precisely the same moment. If you're on the chair, you can walk into Dadasana or come into child's pose. Feet together, knees apart. Move your sit bones all the way to your heels first and then extend your torso forward. Rest your head either on the floor or on a lift. And while we're not working so hard here, so I'm not, not looking for very muscular actions, can you have the awareness, the energy flow of the outer legs moving from the outer knee towards the outer hip? Can you have the energy flow, again, not muscular, just a flow of energy from above the, the front of the knee back towards the torso? A lengthening from the inner knee to the lower abdomen. And again, energy, and then move the energy from the hamstring towards the buttock and the bottom of the buttock towards the hamstring. You take your hands underneath your shoulders, push to come up. Lie back on the floor, take your arms out to the side. Joe, if you need some more space for your arms, uh, give yourself some more space from that wall. Start with your legs bent, feet on the floor, arms are out to the sides. Take your legs together and bend your legs into your chest. So again, I'm not asking for that muscular action of the legs. But I am asking that with all that work, you, you, you notice the remnants of the energy and they're still running from the knee, all sides of the knee towards the torso. 
okay? Because that's gonna create a softening of the abdomen. Now keep the thighs together as you take your knees towards your right elbow. And there's still an energetic movement from the, from the knee, all sides, towards the torso, outer leg, front leg, inner leg, backward. It's a softening. It's not a muscular action. It's a softening action, especially the inner groin is a softening action. Turn the abdomen to the left as the knees go to the right. With your bottom leg pushed to come up, inhaling. Take your feet on the floor, square your hips and square your shoulders. Bend your legs into your chest. Again, we're not looking for muscular action in the legs, but we're looking for an observation of that energy flow from the knee towards the torso. Outer leg, front leg, inner leg, back leg. And as you maintain that, even the thighs together, take your knees towards your left elbow. And again, the energy flowing back towards the torso. Outer leg, front leg, inner leg, back leg. Groins are soft. So there's a releasing of the abdomen. With your bottom leg pushed to come up. Place your feet on the floor. Square your hips and square your shoulders. Bend your legs into your chest. Hold the face of your knees. On your inhalation, let your legs fall away from you just a little bit. Hands are still on the face of the knees. On your exhalation, draw the legs towards you. Inhaling, legs move away. Exhaling, legs drawing towards you. Inhaling, legs moving away. Exhaling, legs drawing towards you. So on the pace of your breath, just a few breaths like this. Just easing the lower back, massaging the abdomen. And on your next inhalation, take your feet to the floor. Straighten your legs one at a time. Let your legs fall away from each other. Find a comfortable place for your arms. And let everything go. No more work in the legs. Just witness what the legs do on their own. There's been a lot of work on the legs. Can you let the legs flow away from the torso, like streams flowing away from the source. Can you let the legs completely surrender to gravity, surrendering to the mother earth below you? A complete and utter letting go. And we didn't do as much with the arms today, <clears throat> but can you still allow the arms to flow away from the torso? And can you let the arms completely surrender to gravity, surrender to the mother earth below you? Let the torso itself surrender to gravity, surrender to the mother earth below you.
the skull itself, letting the skull completely release, all the facial features completely releasing. <clears throat> Release, relax your ears, the outer ears, the inner ears, and draw the inner ears inward and begin to listen to your breath from the inside. You don't need to focus on the breathing, the breath will breathe you. Can you focus on the witnessing of the breath? Become a witness to the breath as the breath breathes you. Notice as the mind wanders and with kindness and compassion, return to the breath.
You begin slowly coming out, deep in your inhalation, and lengthen your exhalation. Soft, smooth, peaceful inhalation. Soft, smooth, peaceful exhalation. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor, knees together, feet apart. Place your hands onto your abdomen or onto your chest. Pick a side when you feel ready, extend your arm past your ear, roll to that side. Rest your ear into your upper arm. Take a few breaths here. Whenever you feel ready, take your top hand, place it on the floor in front of your heart, turn your torso towards the floor, come up chest first, head last. Come up to sitting, bring your palms together. Broaden across the collarbone, broaden across the back chest. Draw your eyes back and down as you gently turn the corners of your lips up, taking a moment to observe your practice. What's different? What's changed? And let's close our practice together by chanting one collective own. Deep inhalation. Oh. Then you allow your eyelids to open. Big smile. Namaste. Bow to the divine within you. Thank you, everybody. Um, if you are interested in a 10 week journey of self love, we are doing the 10 week immersion. It starts February 22nd. Um, you can go to selfloverevolution.com. There's a link there for the class. A bunch of people have already signed up for it. Uh, if you have questions, let me know. It's going to be a 10 week journey into learning how to truly be kind to ourselves so we can have the life we want in all aspects of it. So if you have questions about that, let me know.